Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to Renaissance Executive Forum's Expert Insights Series. You know, I would imagine you all feel the same way that when we enter a new year, one of the most consistent things that we're looking for to create is more wisdom, more consciousness, and to create better impact, right? At REF, we're dedicated to helping each other make conscious and purposeful decisions that have lasting positive effects. And today, we're fortunate to have an expert in that area with us. Jessica Schneider is the founder and chief possibility officer, as well as ongoing coach with Wealth. I can attest personally that Jessica takes a very holistic approach to working with leaders to help them become conscious influencers of building healthy cultures, organizations, and communities. And I think that all starts with them becoming more purposeful, purposeful and intentional with themselves. So I want to welcome Jessica and um, um, I'm excited that she's going to take us on a journey of how to discover an integrative approach that helps change makers like yourself reimagine and elevate your leadership skills so you can create the inspired impact that you want. So welcome back, Jessica. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And um, one more thing that I'll say for the audience is um, as uh, Jessica moves through her presentation, um, we're going to hold questions till later. But what we really want you to do is go ahead and capture those thoughts and ideas or comments in the chat as we go along, and we will circle back to them. Jessica, all yours. John, it's such a privilege to be here, and um, I love being with you, and I have found that the res Renaissance community is filled with such extraordinary, extraordinary people. So uh, thank you again for the opportunity to be here and um, have this inspiring conversation with you. As I look deep into the green dot on my computer, I imagine all the faces in different places each of you are in. I imagine your offices and the sounds outside your door. Is it a dog, a kid, or somebody in your office? For me, often it's a snowplow. It's amazing how far across the planet we stretch and in some magical way, we have all come together for a conversation on purpose. I'm truly grateful for you being here, coming here to listen, to learn, and hopefully leave with a nugget of wisdom or inspiration. Twenty twenty two. This is an aspirational question that I thought would be a great way for you to get to think about what you want to create in this year and beyond. This wisdom came from an indigenous elder in my community. And rather than introducing myself as Jessica and what I do, this offered a unique alternative. For me, this is more vulnerable, yet authentic, and a generative way to start a conversation. So who do you want to be known as? And I invite you to drop a few comments in the chat box if you feel so inclined. I want to be known as someone who leaves a room better than when I entered it. I want to be known as someone who lives with kindness, grace, and integrity. I want to be known as intelligent, capable, someone who works with excellence, an adventurer, somebody who's always learning and growing, and to be an influencer of good in all the lives that I touch, whether that's my family, my friends, my work, and my community. So what about you? What would it be like if you started a meeting with this question or introduced yourself this way or asked this about someone else? This question is about legacy 
And it's about becoming that living legacy. And it is in this, within this, the imprint of this, that our purpose lies. A man without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder, a waif, and no man. This was written in the 1800s, and this is purpose is not a new concept. It is a question that has spanned the ages of time. It's not always easy to define or know. It's a source of great debate and question. It is a source of yearning and desire. It is a journey, a process. Pieces evolve and at its core, it's the same. I came to the work of purpose through the confluence of four things. And admittedly, I was a skeptic, from a, particularly from a professional lens. I kind of thought it was flaky. I first, um, the first point, I, I, I had a strong yearning inside of me, an insatiable curiosity for my own purpose. And it was this invisible pull of knowing that I was here on this planet to do something. But what was it? I was also influenced by my time in the nonprofit sector, witnessing the power of purpose and how people who believed in something so much greater than themselves and being of service to make, could make such a big impact despite the chronic scarcity of resources and challenges they faced. I also had an incident a collision with my son um, playing pickup hockey, parents versus kids. And it caused me to have a head, in head injury that left me lower functioning than someone who had been thrown through a windshield without a seatbelt. Some doctors felt that I should not be here, but there was something deep inside me that made me get out of bed every day to become a warrior to heal myself. I knew my work was not done. And professionally, I have worked with many executives on career transition. Our city had a huge economic downturn. 3,000 people a day were be, being laid off and losing their jobs. And the jobs that they once moved to our country for no longer existed. And many of them weren't coming back. So the purpose work that we did helped them reconnect with their passions and, and their skills as a professional. And rather than seeing their passions and their purpose as separate, they saw them as one. And purpose became that bridge and the connector between the two. And they saw in the value of who they were and what they brought to the table and why they did what they did. And their work took on a whole new meaning and there was so much more power in what they were capable of. So fast forward years later, I know it has become some of the most impactful work that I do. And without the foundation and insight as to who we are and what gifts we have and what drives us and what we want to bring to this world, the rest of the goals we create have less meaning and power behind them. When we slow down and take time to really examine, reflect, and create from a place of purpose, what we are capable of amplifies. So the journey of today is about what is purpose? What is purpose and what is it not? And why does it matter? We will look from an individual and organizational perspective and we will touch on some emerging trends and what does it look like to cultivate purpose? And what does it look like to be a purposeful leader? We'll be seeing this through the lens um, of self-leadership. Leadership is the ability of an individual or a group to influence and guide. In order to be intentional and meaningful about the kind of impact we wanna create, we need to be aware of ourselves. We have all heard the quote, be the change you wish to see in the world. And our biggest ability to create change and impact the world is through self-leadership. That is where we have the most influence, positive or negative, and it is from here that we can create a ripple of impact. So let's start with what purpose is not. Purpose is not static. How we express purpose evolves as we evolve. At the root and at, at its core, it will be consistent, 
but the expression of it will change. It does not come alive on a shelf or a binder. It is not a goal. It is not something that we achieve. A goal is something that we achieve. I mean, I want to increase sales by 20%. I want to climb a mountain. Our purpose is a way of being. It's something we aspire to. Purpose is not a job, a title, a career. They are all vehicles in which to express a purpose, as can be being a parent, a friend, a volunteer, a community member. We are human and our lives have many dimensions, so our purpose has many avenues to be experienced. Purpose is not constrained by borders or by religion, by race, by age, or by time. It is embedded in the human psychology and way of being. I believe that we all have a common human desire to make a difference and want to make an impact no matter who we are. Whether it is Glenn, the homeless gentleman who collects bottles at my house, he said to me, Jessica, I have worked my hard my whole life. Some things did not go well. I see what is happening on the streets. These kids are going through so much and the drugs are so bad. I just want to help them. I want to share my story so they don't have to be doing what they're doing or where they are. And we have the more well-known purposes of people like Martin Luther King to have a dream of all men being equal. So what is purpose? Purpose, it is a verb. It invites action. It is an intention. It is an invisible, tangible force. It's what propels you. It's what drives you. It's what inspires you. It's what makes you want to get out of bed in the morning. Understanding what motivates us dramatically increases our ability to achieve our extraordinary. Purpose is the filter in how we see the world. It is the fuel that drives our thoughts, our decisions. It is it is a guidepost of what matters most in our lives. It's what we say yes to. It's what we say no to. It affects health and our ability to navigate difficult times. It drives motivation. It reflects the value we bring to the world and ultimately our personal joy. So what is the difference that you are trying to make in the world? What are the strengths and passions that you bring to the table? Purpose is in the essence of who you are. It is your personal brand. It is what makes you distinctive. It's what people would notice when you're not there. It is what energizes you and it's what brings you joy. And it's about something that is bigger than you. What does purpose do? It is a guidepost. It is a North Star. It is what you say yes to and what you say no to. It creates clarity during complexity. It is a compass. It can keep moving in the right direction in terms of uncertainty and ambiguity. And who doesn't need that right now? It creates meaning. Andrew Agassi was number one at tennis in the world. And yet it left him empty and he went into a deep, dark place. Being number one was a goal and he achieved it, but it didn't bring him to life. It didn't have meaning to him. He realized what gave him meaning was entertaining people, creating experiences, memories of a lifetime. And now he has taken that energy and transformed it into working with creating education opportunities for children. Purpose creates motivation and connection and drive. We all have seen people accomplish amazing things when we are focused on something bigger than ourselves. It fosters resilience. There's a great deal of science that shows purpose predicts both health and longevity. 
It is a buffer to our challenges. It allows us to reframe stress. It gives us faster recovery from negative events and it helps us remain even keeled. It unleashes potential. And this I have seen time and time again. My analogy from witnessing so many people uncover their purpose is this. Without a clear purpose, it's like having a car with dirty gasoline. You get to where you wanna go and sometimes you're okay. The car sputters, it can stall, it lurches, it can emit black smoke. Versus when someone sees and connects with their purpose, it's like putting a high octane clean premium fuel into the gas tank. It is the same car, but it has way more power, way more agility, speed, and dependability. And this is what I get to see and experience with my clients on a regular basis. It unleashes potential. And my observations that are also backed by research and show that many of these common characteristics in leaders that are leading without perfect experience, living on autopilot, they're not aware of what is possible. Their stress levels are high. They have anxiety. They have a lack of clarity and focus. They feel out of alignment. They're working hard, not smart, living in reactivity, fighting fires, rather than thinking strategically and not creating or having a truly a clear vision for themselves or their organization. They experience fatigue. They're not as productive. They're trying to do it all. They have lost sight of what they've started in the first place. They're in, disengaged at times, and they're not feeling as fulfilled as they'd like to be. They can be frustrated and feel low in their confidence. Conversely, when we, leaders have a sense of purpose, we see increased motivation, increased care, clarity, increased sense of meaning and understanding to what they bring, increased confidence and trust in self, resulting in lower stress levels and greater resilience. When we are able to live in lower stress, then our ability to solve problems, to make better decisions and authentically empower others increases substantially. I will share a, a brief story of a client, Anna. She said, the process of creating a purpose statement allowed me to reflect and pause. It made me stop and think, why am I doing this? I was focused on my to-do list. And this process made me reflect on why I'm doing this. What brings me joy? What anchors me? I'm so much happier these days. I cannot imagine where I am now, where, where I was versus where I was. I have always dreamed of feeling this way. And she never thought this was possible. She said it made me look at how I am as a leader. Prior to this process, I was working hard, pulling regular all-nighters, overwhelmed, tired, and always in a place of struggle. I felt weak and that I was incapable of leading. I did not feel I had the required skills or talent to read effectively. My joy, my satisfaction was a two out of 10. I was not sure I was meant to be doing what I was doing. Purpose has changed how I look at my business. It made me put things into buckets. I could see what was driving my frustration and what was energizing me. I was able to eliminate what was making me crazy and depriving me of sleep and increasing my time on things that bring me happiness. I feel stronger, more calm and present with my family and my teens. I understand the value that I bring. I have more trust in my ability to lead and more effectively empower my team. And she is now living at an eight out of 10. That said, this is not always easy to be that way. We are currently living in a very demanding time. We have the uncertainty of COVID and what brings and what that brings. Politics, the environment, the metaverse. We are in this constant storm of unknowns. And I've coined it the pandemic of stress. 
It costs the US economy over $300 billion a year. 83% of people struggle to, with work-related stress and 40% of turnover is due to stress. It's costing, and that costs around 120 to 200% of one salary. In a larger company, it can cost more than $3.6 million a year. With all of these unknowns as, as leaders, equilibrium and stability are needed. We need something to anchor into and to help guide us. And purpose is a path and a lever to just do that. By no means is it a magic wand, but it is a powerful platform to build from and to mitigate the influence of stress. Driven, an Australian company who's done extensive research and focused on teaching on how to build the skills of resilience, Purpose stands at the top of their model. Purpose is the true north, it is a guidepost. And having that place to focus calms our brain. It gives us orientation. It gives us something to come back to when we're knocked off course and it provides clarity, allowing us to make better decisions faster and easier. It generates commitment. It fuels the hormones of pleasure and creates motivation. It determines priorities and the kinds of goals we create and the actions we take. And the outcomes and, in, and, it, and these outcomes impact the chemistry of our brain and our body. We move from har producing hormones of stress to producing regenerative hormones. We feel better, we sleep better, we think better, and we have more energy. Next slide. Look at it this way. If you woke up in the morning and your cell phone was on red, how would you feel? You would feel stressed. You would feel frustrated. You do not have access to the resources that you want. Your bodies are the same way. If you're running low on the battery, um, are you guys able to change to the next slide? When your batteries are the same way, if you're running low on the battery, your experience of the world is different than when it's charged. When we have more energy in the system, we can do more. Purpose and purposeful leadership acts as an energizer. It adds, to charge, it adds charge to our personal battery and increases resilience. We can access those higher functioning levels in our brain Next slide. So once we are charged, if you go to the next slide, you'll see once we are charged, we see the world is like this little boy, that the ocean is our oyster. When we are depleted, the world feels like it's going to take us over. It impacts our perspective and what we're capable of and it impacts the place in which we lead from. Think about it this way. If you are a person who's feeling energized, if you turn this to a practical point of view, when you're in a chronic stress state, we tend to be living below the line down here. We see the focus on the problems. Things are being done to us. We are a victim. We are blaming others. We feel contracted. We have a scarcity mindset. When we have a charge battery, we have a better chance of spending more time above the line. When we're living above the line, we are living from a purposeful place, an intentional place. We are more creative, generative, can solve problems. Take, take responsibility. We are all human and we will go below the line. The important thing is, is being aware of when you're there and you ask yourself, how long do I need to be there? Ask what action can I take to move above the line? This can be a general state of mind or it can be situational. So where are you? Are you leading from above the line or below the line? And this can be a valuable place to have a conversation with your team. 
Are they solving problems from above or below the line men's mindset? Because where we are in this changes the outcomes or the potential outcomes that we create. So here's a simple and practical way for you to start to become aware of your personal battery. You can do this on a piece of paper, in a journal, create a spreadsheet. There are two sides, the side of what energizes you and the side of what depletes you. You can apply this from the lens of self leading. You can apply this from the lens of yourself leading others and from an organizational perspective. Keep in mind that this is a living document. So make it work for you. Just list the things and don't judge them or analyze them to start. So on one side, you list those things that drain you, that make you feel heavy, that you're resistant to, that make you feel contracted. And these are the things that deplete you. And these are the things you want to move away from. The other side, right, what energizes you, what makes you feel tall, what makes you feel open when you're in the flow. Those are the things you want to move towards. So when you look at the depleted column, ask yourself, what can I delete? What are those things that I can just get rid of? You can ask yourself, what can I delegate? Who else can do this? Who might be better at this and love this more than me? And then what do you need to accept? What do you need to manage and what do you need to reframe? As a result of this exercise, one businessman, it became very clear to him all the things he really didn't like to do. Yet there are certain tasks that just had to be done and they had to be done by him. His solution was to group them together to do them all first thing in the morning so they did not weigh heavily on his mind all day. The outcome for him was it added huge energy into his work and he had more freedom to mentally focus on his priorities. Big impact can happen with small and simple changes. And the energized side is where you want to focus. This is what you want to do more of. It's like the GPS of showing you where you want to go. And again, this can be used from a personal perspective, a team perspective, to applying it to a stakeholder lens. Who and what are adding energy into your system and who is taking it away? Where are those tensions? To make this a little more meaningful, let me share a story about a leader I recently worked with. He took a deep dive into a, his purpose and all that it meant to him. And he created the following statement. His purpose was to see and harness the inherent potential of people so together we can create extraordinary environments. And then he followed that statement with this purpose exercise or with the um, add and depletes, the energize and the depleter exercise. He indicated that this helped him bring it all together for him. He was now clear about what he needed to do with his business. He had a stronger, more focused vision that he was able to push into the organization. He'd been a CEO who adapted from being an innovator, a creator, a people person, to being focused on operation, to being focused on the operation side. And he was really detached from the people. He was feeling tired, drained, and less productive, and not as fulfilled as he wanted to be. He was doing the things he thought he had to do, but not the things that he loved to do. His insights created changes in how he worked and set up his company. The changes allowed him to reconnect with the creative side and the hiring of the people and building the culture, while everything else was subject to being removed from his plate. He became more intentional, he became more purposeful, and he added more resources to his team. And now he's more strategic with more time to think, to create and implement his vision rather than just be in reaction all the time. He's taking bigger and bolder risks 
and he has a renewed sense of energy for himself, his people, and his business. He even mentioned that he was able to leave the business for a few days confidently for the first time in almost 10 years. I'd like to share some high level statistics as well that reflect purpose and the influence that it's having on, on the workplace. And um, there's a lot of data out there and more and more data is coming all the time. But 50% of um, workers who are purpose driven are more likely to be leaders and be promoted. They're 64% more likely to be filled, fulfilled at work. They're more engaged they experience higher levels of productivity and health. And some CEOs are seeing purpose as the emerging as the new driving force of the economy, um, the purpose economy. And some will argue that this is even going to have a bigger influence on the economy than technology. Um, organizations that have a higher purpose um, have 40% higher levels of retention and 30% higher levels of innovation and higher growth rates. <clears throat> and here's a quote that just reflects that, that CEOs work to generate profits and return value to shareholders, but the best run companies do more. They put the customer first, they invest in their employees and their communities, and the end is the most promising way to build long-term value. And as we know, COVID has created a shift in demand, um, has created a huge shift in the market and created an increase in demand for purpose work. <clears throat> 4.5 million people left their jobs in the US in November alone. It is the great resignation or the great reevaluation. People are reevaluating their work and their lives. And this is creating opportunity for organizations to re reconsider um, their people, priorities, well-being, resilience, and purpose. Um, Two-thirds of people surveyed in the U.S. said COVID has caused them to reflect on their purpose. 50% are reconsidering the kind of work that they do. And people are expecting their jobs to become a source, a significant source of purpose. Employers will need to meet this demand or they will lose talent. The companies that are emerging as the leaders in the new economy are truly redesigning every aspect of their, their business around purpose. <clears throat> These trends, um, so when we're looking forward with purpose, Let's take a look at the younger generation. Some of these trends are not exclusive to millennials, but since they're um, going to be making up 75% of the global workforce by 2025, they're huge influencers. So 29% of millennials are engaged at work. Nine out of 10 of them would trade money for workplace purpose. Two thirds are more engaged when companies are paying attention to their well being, social, community, financial, and career. 70% of millennials expecting their, are expecting their employees to focus on societal or mission driven problems. And 53% of millennials suggest they've changed their relationship with a business because of the impacts of its products and services. <clears throat> have on the environment and society. So research is really indicating that organizations need to be clear about their purpose. They need to implement tangible programs that enable their people to get involved and express their purpose. And in order to retain and attract talent, it's about pay. It is, it is about pay. Being paid fairly is important. Creating connection to each other to their work and their organizational purpose. <clears throat> the playbook is being created on how to navigate these emerging trends as we speak. It is not easy, it is not simple. So as leaders, what can we do? Or perhaps the more vital question is who do we need to be? We need to be authentic. We need to be connected. We need to be clear focused, 
energized, adaptable, aware, purposeful, and have a strong ability to build trust. <clears throat> so looking forward, the cultivation of purpose and purposeful leaders are key opportunities for growth. A conscious, purposeful leader is to lead with awareness and intention. It is a practice. It's about taking 100% responsibility for yourself, your way of being, and the impact and influence that you have and the actions that you take. Conscious, purposeful leaders lead with empathy, curiosity. So be open to other perspectives. Invite diversity. Be an ongoing learner. Act with integrity. Create trust. Be authentic and vulnerable. Oh, and appreciation. It is so simple and yet so often missed. It is one of the easiest things to do that make people feel valued and seen and part of a community. And it costs nothing. I thank you. I acknowledge you for the effort that you're putting in. I acknowledge your courage today. It is so simple to say that to somebody and it has such meaning. Conscious leaders, purposeful leaders work towards win-win-win situations and keep that in their mindset. And, and finally, it's really about asking yourself the question on an ongoing basis, how can I create value? All of these actions are nutrition for your purpose, for your personal and professional ecosystem. So in order to be a purposeful leader in meeting the market, shifting in, and meeting the market shift to purpose-driven organizations, it starts with you. It starts with the self. It means understanding your purpose. It means living your purpose. Purpose is something that is alive and it can only have impact if we pay attention to it. It is not something that sits on a shelf or over an entrance or in a binder. It is part of who you are and what you do on a daily basis in the little ways and in the large ways. There are many ways to walk the path of exploring your purpose. There is not a right way or a wrong way. Find your way and be experimental. It can be spiritual. Some walk with healer, work with healers and intuitives. It can be through meditation. It can be doing, it can be following reflective questions. I have a hybrid model. We start with a sorting prioritization process. It's instinctive and creates a structured framework in short order. And from there, we have the seeds and the qualities and the essence of a statement. And we take those qualities and do a deeper dive into the meaning of, of those words and the stories that lie in behind them. And this, this is where true power is generated from. Purpose is not something that is outside of us. It is something that comes from within us. So you can ask yourself some of these questions and these are some of the clues to help you find your purpose. What are your strengths? When are you in your flow? What are you doing when you lose track of time? Notice when you feel aligned. Notice when you're operating in your zone of genius and what's happening. Pay attention to your passions. And notice when you feel like you're on top of your game. And focus what energizes you. It's not about what you can do. Each and every one of you who is in this room today can do a lot of different things. It's about what energizes you and excites you. Purpose is an igniter. And if you ignite yourself, 
you ignite others. Purpose is not an endpoint. Purpose is aspirational. It is a way of being. It creates intention. And your goals stem from your purpose. It helps create alignment. What do you say yes to and what do you say no to? And it inspires action and it generates amazing outcomes. So when you're thinking about your purpose, here are some tips. Make it come alive. Make it your own. Put it in art. Create music. Put it in a spreadsheet. Whatever works for you, this is all about you. Be curious. Practice it. Weave it in as part of your life, not something that is separate from your life. You don't need more to add on to what you already do. Create it as part of the fabric of who you are and what you do. And purpose it can take courage and conviction. So find supporters. Allow it to evolve and grow. And most of all, just be you. Your purpose is a generator. And when you are aligned with who you are, your gifts and talents, and the impact that you want to make, you can lead with authenticity, clarity, inspiration and vitality and that will in turn create a ripple of goodness to those around you it will ripple to your teams your organization your stakeholders your family your community but it all starts with you it starts with you become your living legacy i so thank you for the honor and privilege of being here today and I'm really happy now um, to answer any questions that you have. Jessica, before I um, start sharing some of the questions with you that the audience is, uh, is supplying, um, may I just say <clears throat> how inspirational I found your, your, your presentation Inspirational because I think we're all becoming more and more um, uh, ex exposed, if you will, to this conversation about purpose. And for some, um, it remains vague or intangible or, you know, mystical or something along those lines. And I think that what you've really done here for all of us it showed us how powerful and pragmatic it is to put our attention on not only clarifying our own purpose, but bringing that into our organizations and our communities, um, the world, if you will. So thank you so much. So the first question that I wanted to share thank you. is from Adolfo Chavez. And he was asking for recommendations to energize one's team during times of big changes and uncertainty. I think that's very relevant to today, right? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things, um, a recent leader that I was working or what I suggested for him to do was um, work with this concept of acknowledgement. And um, as Oprah would say, no matter who crossed her stage, whether it was, you know, somebody who committed a horrific time to a celebrity, to a thought leader, there's kind of three commonalities. Do you see me? Do you hear me? And what I say, does it matter to you? So this simple act of acknowledgement um, can be really powerful. So I've invited leaders to A, acknowledge themselves, and in their meetings, then acknowledge each person in their team. And then each team member goes around the table and does the same thing. So they acknowledge everybody in the room for something. And it can be as simple as thank you for getting me that coffee, or I really appreciate the extra effort you put into that project. Um, and then they have to acknowledge themselves. And when you go around the room like that, it creates a sense of security and stability and value and people <clears throat> show up differently as a result of that. It becomes less, I'm fighting to, 
I feel surrounded and protected. It sounds like, given what you said earlier, that um, passion is very connected to purpose. If we are acknowledging, maybe genuinely acknowledging some passion that a team member has, we actually may, in fact, help them connect to their purpose, even unconsciously. Would you agree or not? Absolutely. And when you're working in your strengths and when you're working in your zone of genius, um, I know in the world of coaching, there's been ongoing debate and conversation about are you better to elevate your weaknesses or focus on your strengths? Um, I don't think it's an either or, but from my experience is focusing on your strengths, yeah. focusing and harnessing and leveraging that those gifts and those talents are what going to catapult you. Yes, there's always things we need to dial up and improve on and, and tweak within our weaknesses. But rather than focus on what we're doing wrong and why we're not good enough, focus on what we're really inherently talented at. And it's often invisible to us. We don't see it. And be because it comes so naturally. Yeah. And part of the work that I love to do is draw out that invisible and make it visible for my clients so they can see how what they're doing is so powerful and so unique to them. And that is that is what they're there to do. And, the, and that exercise that you were suggesting is a way of doing that for our team members as well, is by appreciating and acknowledging what we see that is making an impact on us, it, I believe, would help amplify or continue that or encourage it to come back more and more. Absolutely. And, and, and then I've seen with some of my leaders doing this purpose, this sorting um, process that you're familiar with, John. Mm -hmm. So there's a prioritization and clients come up with these top 10 qualities of who they are. On the other side of that, there's also a pile of cards that show them who they're not. So it's very clear that these are not the things that they are gifted at, talented at, like to do, or are part of their purpose. So those are the things where they go, who else on my team can do this? Yeah. And I was working with a leader at Amazon recently, and data was something that she always had to put forward, but she never really liked it. And she was holding on so tight. There were these responsibilities that she felt she had to do for everyone. And when we walked through that exercise and I invited her that there are other people who love to do these things. Yeah. She was able to release those responsibilities, which empowered and created growth on our team and take some of the pressure and down regulate that stress that she was experiencing because she could focus on her genius and allow other people to step into these things that were growth opportunities for them and part of their genius. Exactly. Yeah. I could see that, just, that just being such a, um, a, um, a, a, a freedom booster for an individual because we, we, we hold so tight saying these things need to be done and we don't like them. And oftentimes we think that nobody likes them when that's not the case. You know, somebody, I, I, I know people who love doing spreadsheets and that just is like putting bamboo up my fingernails, but, you know, but that's, that's their joy. And so, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, you asked, or you, you were talking <clears throat> at one point about organizations need to be clear about their purpose. Could you maybe speak um, for just a moment on what are some steps? Um, obviously, they can work with you around that. But what are some steps that pragmatically they could take today, simple steps that they could take in that direction today to, you know, that's that, that's a, it's, it's almost like, yeah, I know that's important, but how do I do that? So how does a how does a company make sure that they're becoming clearer and clearer about their purpose? Well, I think I mean it's a big it's a big question. Yeah. It's not always easy depending on the size of the organization and the age of the organization about how to operationalize purpose. Um but I think you know, we are microcosms of an organization as individuals. So I truly believe it starts with self. So the leadership team, if you don't know what your own purpose is, how are you going to create alignment with your organizational purpose? 
Secondly, when you're taking a look at it from an organizational perspective, it's often the same questions. What are the strengths? What is the difference that you're trying to make in this world? Where is the organization operating in their zone of genius? Right. And it's not about the products and services that you, you offer. It's about something that's bigger than that. And the products and services that you offer are a mechanism to be able to do that, but they don't define you. Yeah. Yeah. So getting starting kind of like, you know, I, I, I um, I know that you are certified as a conscious capitalism um, uh, facilitator, coach, consultant. Um, and uh, when I read the, uh, the book Conscious Capitalism by uh, um, the founder of Whole Foods, um, in the introduction, they talked about how um, it was made, the statement was made <clears throat> um, kind of... Uh, uh, to try and I think pop everybody's awareness open. Um, and it was, the statement was very simple. It was consider business as a platform for personal development. And when I took that statement in, I realized that in some ways our businesses are an extension of ourselves. They are our playground. They are our, they are our, our, our arena for growing ourselves, which then has an impact on others as well. And so it really makes sense that you're saying, start with you, right? It's awesome. Um, so we've got another question or, or, or um, um, request. Uh, and the request is, any other practical tips for us to get started creating a purposeful mission statement or um, I can send, uh, so practical tips. I think um, it starts with one, the desire. Number two, it's awareness. So back to some of those things I have, I don't know, um, some people like to journal, some people like spreadsheets, um, some people like to paint, but start to find ways that can capture the qualities um, of the things that energize you. Because embedded in there are the themes that, that reflect your purpose. Um, you, there's a lot of, I can leave some resources um, when this presentation is emailed and I can add some resources of different places that you can look to that can walk you through a purpose journey. Um, and, but I really think it starts with this very simple concept of what do you want to move away from? and what energizes you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what energizes you and you're not really clear on that, and it can be the simple things, what you don't want, if you just flip that over, that's a sign of what you do want. Yeah, that's really, 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 again, great pragmatic advice. Um, I wanna remind everybody, um, if, if you don't already know this, that the recording for um, this event will be on our YouTube channel. Um, you can, if you are already a, an REF member and you don't know where exactly where that is, um, get in contact with your forum leader. Um, the other thing that I want to kind of just um, show how much we um, really uh, embrace what, what Jessica is bringing to the table here today is we start all of our new members by asking them to do a life purpose exercise and a life purpose plan. Because we believe that by getting that clarity around what's important to you, that is, you know, not only your purpose, but your values, what you stand for, and your vision of yourself and your life, your organization, that becomes that guidepost. That that Jessica has been talking about. And it becomes a living kind of compass that you can refer to over and over again. So we are totally committed to helping our members right from the get-go, as well as throughout their, their, their time with us to constantly be coming back to that. Um, so let's see, um, I'm getting lots of thanks um, from, from folks and very, Right there at the beginning, um, you'll 
be able to go back and look at them yourself. Jessica, lots of nice purpose statements that came through. Um, what what would you want us to, we're, we're just a couple minutes away from concluding today. So what would you, if, if, if there was only one kind of central idea that you wanted us to embrace today, what would it be that you'd like us to, to, to kind of consider, hold on to, let it marinate, et cetera? John, I don't like being limited <laughs> to one thing. Okay. Um, what I would say is uh, I wouldn't be scared by it. It doesn't happen and drop out of the sky like a light with a lightning bolt. That's what I crave for years. It really is about intention. It is about um, exploring. It's about experimenting and it's about practicing. Mm -hmm. And you can have the best purpose statement in the world, but if you put it in your shelf and never look at it and you don't live it, it has no meaning. It has no power. It has no life force. Yeah. So really building and creating a purpose statement and being aware of it is one step. But that only really matters if you're willing to take the second step. And that is creating conscious, intentious action to live it out and be that. I, wow. Great. Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, Thank you, everyone. Uh, and um, the uh, recording will be up um, shortly. For those of you who would like to revisit it, um, there was lots again, lots of uh, practical ways that you can begin working right there in that slideshow, and um, uh, and please share it um, with others. Uh, thank you for attending today, um, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Expert Insights. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. May you have nuggets in, of inspiration throughout the day.